keep these bugs away. Show them now pumps. It's funny because when I got into tattooing, it was at a strange stage in my life because I was 17 and growing up, I've, I guess, made good decisions. I did well in school and was heavily into sports and I chose a different path, which was tattooing. And everybody looked at me like, you've done so well up until this point. Now you're going to hang out with all these fuck ups and devil worshipping, drug dealing, motorcycle riding type of guys. So what are you, you know, what are you doing with your life? So at the time, nobody thought it was a really good idea. But now I'm 33 years old and they look at me like, maybe it wasn't such a bad idea. There's a group of people leading the pack. Is Mike one of those people? Oh, absolutely. I mean, recently talking to one of the guys at the shop about this, he said, do you think Mike's in the top 10 guys? And I said, yeah. Name nine guys that are better than him. And I'm not looking to hurt anybody's feelings, but I think it's closer to the top five. And we agreed. We agreed. Yeah, maybe it's not even the top 10. Maybe it's the top five. You want a pillow? Eh. You gotta wait till noon till the shop help gets in you though. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I've always described my tattooing as Asian influenced. Um, I think I have a contemporary approach on traditional Japanese tattoo style. Overall look, I want my tattoos to be timeless. I want it to be beautiful as the day I did it 20 years later. I don't want somebody to look at my tattoos and know what year or whatever I did it in. It's exciting to look at. Detailed and simple at the same time. Exciting, you know? Yeah. Action packed. <laughs> That's what I said the other day, I guess. You know, he has that extra little bit of, like I said, edginess to it that always kind of grabbed me, you know? Even like the way he does his compositions and stuff. An overall look, I guess. He still does all kinds of subject matter. It was pretty much centered around doing a good quality job for the person that comes in the door. He's not like, oh, I'm going to try this crazy thing and if it doesn't work out, it doesn't. He's, he's like, no, this person wants this, so this is what they're going to get. I'm going to add a lot to that, but it's going to be in, in the nuances and in the progression of my drawing ability. And people respond to that. The whole process is his personality. You know, it's very structured and very right. He just, he'll show up when he's supposed to show up. He'll work really hard. He'll do the research. He'll have the drawing. He'll have it all thought out. Takes it very seriously. And he'll do a great job. I'll even chase my clients. Like, can you come in for a consultation? Can we talk about what you're getting? I want to be prepared. I don't want you to show up and me draw it on the spot. I, I, don't, I don't work well like that. It's, it's possible I could do, do a tattoo like that, but I, I don't feel like they're getting my best. When the time comes to do the tattoo, then, you know, I'll try to knock it out of the park. Even little stuff, they, they'll come in and, and I said, you know, any of the guys in the shop are more than capable of doing this. You don't need to wait for me, you know. They, they'll do an outstanding job. And they're like, no, you know, we've been watching you a long time and we just want a piece from you. I was born and raised in Massapequa, New York. It's a uh, small town on Long Island. I think I had an average upbringing. I came from a middle-class family. I think I stayed in Massapequa because I felt very comfortable there. I had this mentality that if you build it, they will come. So I felt like, why not be in a place that I grew up in, that I feel most comfortable in, that I know the most people? I felt like I could open up in my mother's basement and people would still come and get tattooed by me. Luckily, you know, I was fortunate for that. You're right, you're in shorts. Oh, man, what's up? I never seen me in shorts. <laughs> Look at those little legs. Chicken legs. My mother tells me I have chicken legs. I think there was a lot of hesitation about putting a tattoo shop in that area because it's so residential. I think he had to meet with a lot of people and show them his credentials and show them he wasn't going to have people, you know, 
pulling up on their bikes at all hours of the night and doing drugs outside. You know, that he has a respectable clientele. I mean, he's tattooed celebrities. His rates are weaning away, you know, people who, of that element, I think. Kings Avenue in Massapequa, it's known as kind of the classy tattoo shop, you know, the, the, the shop that we're hard working, we have our shit together. I would like to think we're known as, as uh, best of the best around here, you know. Working in Long Island, it was, it was a shock of how things were done compared to Boston. In Long Island, they want to get tattooed and they want it done. You know, they come in like, okay, I'll make 15 appointments to get my sleeve, I'll do it every two weeks. It's a dream. The clientele here is actually pretty open to bigger work. He's got big, big, huge pieces on a lot of people running around here. It's pretty crazy. I remember I tattooed a few guys that were starting big projects like a sleeve, yeah. and they lost their jobs, so I would start the conversation by, so what do you do for a living? And the guy would be like, oh, I just lost my job. I'm like, you sure you want to get into this? It's a big commitment, you know, uh, a lot of time and money. And they're like, no, I need to do this. Oh, yeah. They fucking want this, no matter what. My theory on that is that a lot of these people around here, family guys, they don't go out to the bar, they got kids. So it's almost like this is, that's their way of doing something cool that makes them feel alive, I guess. One guy came in once and he wanted Mike to do a sleeve on him. He's like, ah, I don't know, I want some, some fucking demon or something. That thing is sick. So he brings in a Lord of the Rings picture of, you know that guy that whips Gandalf, the, the guy made of fire, and he pulls him down into the, the pit yeah, or whatever? Yeah. He brings that in and Mike does a Fudo sleeve on the guy. The guy, he sees the fire and he's like, fuck yeah. He was just kind of like joking around a little bit and I, I look down at him and I go, you don't, even, you don't even know what that is on your arm, do you? He goes, yeah, I do. I go, okay, what is that? He goes, it's fondue. And Mike and I lost it. They see your tattoos for what they are in as a quality sense, but a lot of times it's your job to incorporate more interesting aspects into the tattoo that tell a story for other people that are viewing it. He's good, right? People he knows and that he does a lot of work on, he pushes it. Because I think, you know, I'll use myself as an example. From my back, I told him I wanted a Hani with a spider web. I mean, my Hani doesn't look like a typical Hani. I think he just went for it. And I'm not going to, you know, I mean, in my mind, he's the artist. He's doing what he's doing. I think he has the most fun when people kind of approach it that way. I'm sure a lot of these tattoo artists do. They don't want to be told what to do. They're artists, you know. They, they want to push it. They want to go. I don't know if he has a favorite piece. I know I, whenever I see him, I'm always kind of blown away. Like the other day he was doing a Phoenix I thought was cool. Like he was just like deep purples and stuff. I always like, you know, he does great severed heads. Someone he was doing like a leg sleeve on. It was like seven severed heads. It was just gory and raw. And I think he was just having fun with it. You know, I grew up with Mike. I know Mike. I know he's an awesome tattoo artist. To see it in a different setting really kind of goes, holy cow. Like, this guy's a name, is, you know, I'm great friends with him. He's like a, almost a celebrity in this like, little circle. One thing I've observed about Mike is that he always continues to have relationships with these people because he's got the mayor feel. He knows everyone's name, shaking everyone's hands. Later, bro. Good seeing you. Thank you. Thank you. I was working one day at the shop. The door opens and I hear, uh, Mikey! And I look up, I'm like, that's Steve Gutenberg. You know, like, I remember him from Police Academy. And he's walking around looking for Mike. Him and his dad came into the shop to get matching tattoos, and his mother found out. Oh, look at this. There they are. Oh, holy shit. Speak of the devil. Hey. Look at this. Are you filming, are you filming for your documentary yeah, right now? Yeah, right now, baby. All right, you want to go to the pizza shop? Sure. Mikey boy. What are you doing, buddy? You got five minutes? You got a minute? They're doing a doc tattoo documentary. Tattoo on you? Say a couple of kind words. Yeah. You're the guy, Master Pequa. <laughs> I gotta lie. Oh no. We gotta lie. <laughs> Mikey, you look Joey great, Pop. man. You look terrific. Too, man. How's everything? It's 
good. Yeah? It's good. I'll see you in the shop. Okay, cool. Yeah, this is the first place that Michael worked. Yeah. Came in as a young man, what, 15 years old, Mike? Yeah, yeah. 15 years old. Oh, he's going to show Mike the Oh, yeah, hey, Mike. What's up, Frank? How are yeah, you, man? This is Mike started right behind this couch. Larry's our manager here. He's he been told here me not to like, hire Michael Rubino. I don't know why. Why is that, Larry? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> It's like he hasn't burned any bridges. All the people he grew up with, they all still live in Long Island. He remembers everyone, he takes care of everybody. Yo, Ed. My man. Welcome to New York. You're back? You know, some of the characters that he hangs out with are so entertaining. Oh, this guy's a legend. Say something to the camera. Next time I get a tattoo, it's gonna be a pizza pie right on my arm. <laughs> Mike Eaton's Ruby Ball style. <laughs> It's incredible how much he brings from the world to Massapequa, you know? It's, it's special, you know, because we had the train there and all these people, the taxi cab drivers, every time our clients would come in, they're like, oh my God, this taxi cab driver was chewing my ear off about how he brought three people from Europe last week and two people from California. None of them can believe that so many people travel just for a tattoo. You said that you've, you've taken some people to the tattoo parlor before? I take a lot of people there. They come, when they come in, I usually ask them, where do you come from? Oh, from the city, one guy from Pennsylvania, another guy from some different places. Yeah, we do, we do. We drop them off, pick them up. I know the place by heart. It's flattering because, you know, people come all over the world and people live down the block from the shop and they're just happy to get tattooed, you know. Some of them don't even know how successful the shop is or that the shop is world renowned or that people come in from all over the world. They, they're just like, oh, you know, he's local, he does a good job, he's a nice guy. That's all we need, you know, the simple life.